my team and I, we've been working a lot on thinking about what some scenarios for the future are. So these aren't predictions, but they're stories about how the future of financial services could evolve. The first one is about scale. And so when you think about the emergence of companies like FundApps and Kensho, when you think about effectively what are, is financial services, financial services software as a service emerging, that's really shaking up the traditional benefits that very large incumbents have been able to lever out of their scale. And what it means is that small and mid-sized players are going to be able to go out and access a highly sophisticated and scalable suite of services that'll be, at the very least, table stakes and allow them to focus much more minutely on the areas that they're really good at. The second um, scenario is an even more fundamentally disruptive one. And today, if you think about the retail universal banking experience, a huge part of that experience is predicated on the fact that there are enormous amount of frictions around owning five different financial products with five different providers. There's a sense in which the incumbents have a big advantage because they're able to put everything for you in one place. But what if in the future that wasn't true? What if as more and more fintechs develop, connective tissue begins to emerge between them that facilitates greater levels of interoperability. And we see this to a degree already with players like Alibaba and Tencent. And my view is that it's likely to continue to emerge and mature. And this would be a really interesting thing for customers, because what we've seen over the last 10 and 15 years is an enormous amount of effort by financial institutions and a huge amount of money put into building customer-centric services. But the reality is, is if we're honest with ourselves, those have not met expectations. Most financial institutions today would confess that they're still inherently product-centric institutions. And there's an interesting inherent advantage of a platform, an Amazon for financial services, if you will, that lets you shop and cross-compare for different sort of products, that maybe even provides you recommendations, is that it can focus exclusively on creating a customer-centric experience while leaving others the job of creating best-of-breed and highly competitive financial products. The third item that we've thought a lot about is risk metrics. Think about FICO today. It's really based on two things. About 70% of your FICO score is based on your use of available credit facilities and your repayment of those credit facilities. But in the future, we're going to see more and more fracturing of those credit facilities. And we're going to see more and more fracturing of the payment experience as well. It's going to make it more and more difficult for traditional players to pull together the right information in those FICO scores. At the same time, you're seeing already today all sorts of people asking themselves, well, how can I know better things about your credit worthiness based on your, um, your social media behavior, based on you know, data that I can get you to link over to me on an API that is really going to potentially allow people to make better choices and that's going to risk an adverse selection for those people who are still reliant exclusively on old mechanisms. Fourth, blockchain. And I know you've heard about blockchain a lot already today. I think it's clear today, in a way that it wasn't two years ago, to financial services executives around the world, that blockchain has the potential to radically remap financial processes. And I think if you look across all sorts of verticals, whether it's proxy voting, it's insurance, whether it's um, you know, uh, asset settlement, all of these things we're talking about, how is, financial, how, how is the blockchain going to really upend these processes. And in the process, it's going to question certain fundamental assumptions that are at the center of existing business models. And then finally, something I'm sure you've already heard a lot about today at this conference, the emergence of machine learning and artificial intelligence has begun the transformation of financial services. We work with uh, one of our tech pioneers, a company in Silicon Valley called IASD, and they do all sorts of crazy stuff around mapping incredibly complex data sets in a topological, a topological and human-readable format. And what they've been able to do, working with a top 10 um, global bank on the administration of their CCAR processes, their comprehensible, comprehensive capital assessment and review, their stress test effectively administered by the Federal Reserve, is to take that from a process that took 300 individuals, analysts, data scientists, and others, and reduced it by 95% 
in terms of staffing and took it from a nine-month process to a three-month process, a complete sea change in how the bank ran that process. We're seeing other really interesting implementations here, like the use of AI networks to detect fraudulent or insider trading patterns. It's going to transform large parts of the financial business, and potentially the job of being a senior executive in financial services is going to transform in some meaningful way from the administration of teams of individuals pursuing an objective to the management of suites of services in which those suites are composed both of AI systems as well as individuals and human experts working together.